Hey folks, I'm just starting the YouTube live. <clears throat> um, I will go ahead and wait. I started a little bit early just to give folks some time to come in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the, the link on our announcement page. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm going to go see.
Hey folks, so I still, I have about nine minutes till 11. So we'll just go ahead and wait for folks to trickle in.
I wish I could play music. <laughs> um, so, hey folks, welcome to week 10. We are already at the end of October. Um, I hope everything has been going well with your classes and um, that you are uh, ready and Ooh. Okay, yeah, sorry, I had to mute something. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you're having a great week and that, again, you were able to take some time to rest um, and recuperate during the weekend. I uh, am excited for this week's lecture. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm just so excited to talk about art and then in particular this um, the theme for this week uh, with protest and affirmation. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, a few announcements. This week is still early voting. So uh, Monday through fr Friday, early voting, and then uh, folks will be able to vote on election day, which is November 3rd on Tuesday. Um, and then also this week, so I know it's been, and I apologize if the shift was kind of uh, hard to adapt to with the quizzes, um, but this, so uh, at the beginning of the semester, I decided to kind of combine the uh, written assignments with also the quizzes that are already part of the modules for the, for the school for the School of Art. And so um, this also kind of helps me stay on top of everything and uh, be able to grade and get um, your work back to you as soon as I can. And so, um, so this week we will not be taking a quiz. Um, this week your assignment is to make an image and uh, uh, yeah, that's exciting. So making an image also with kind of a short phrase or text and um, it can be, and it also is based on uh, an issue that you care deeply about, something in your environment or something that you care deeply about. It can be, you know, uh, animal, uh, like finding shelters for animals. It can be, um, a, you know, environmental. It could be women's rights, LGBTQ. It could be uh, racial justice. Um, so you will able to be able to choose an issue and then create an image based on your stance on that issue. And so um, you will write like a short, uh, phrase, it can be short, you know, um, an example would be like stop the wall or something, um, and then an image to accompany it. And so you can also use drawing, you can use photo montage and collage, um, you can find images online and kind of do like this, like copy and paste and on Photoshop and like, uh, kind of overlap images, changing the color. Um, so you can, you know, use the, the resources and the tools at your disposal. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone's work. Uh, this is due on Monday again, um, by midnight. And so, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, it should be fun. If you have any questions, please just write them on the chat box about, uh, your assignment also, please give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and if everything is okay um, in terms of video and audio. Okay, cool. So let's jump right into week 10. Uh, super excited, okay. Cool. So this week is about social protest and affirmation. 
Um, and we're going to go ahead and just talk about artwork today. Um, and all of the artwork that I'm showing you is part of your reading. Um, and your reading is also in your course materials folder. So it should be accessible to you. Um, so the first image that uh, is, is very powerful and has been uh, is Cuatlicue from the Aztec Empire. Um, and this is from Tenochtitlan, which we saw a, a couple of weeks back. Um, it was made between years 1487 and 1520. Um, it's an Aztec goddess, and uh, Cuatlicue represents so much, and also it, in Chicano art, uh, and also the writings, for example, if you, any of you are Mexican-American studies majors, uh, or history majors, right, and have, have um, read the work of Gloria Anzaldúa, um, she references Cuatlicue a lot, um, uh, she is referenced, Cuatlicue is referenced in theory, uh, Mexican-American uh, theory and Chicano theory. And so uh, in 19, in 1519, the Spaniards conquered the Aztecs um, and in the attempt to wipe out their culture. So this was actually like excavated kind of like in the 1970s or something like that and actually when the as when the spanish arrived at the aztec empire and also uh w destroyed a lot of the cultural figures and the, a lot of cultural sculptures right from the from the aztecs and this one was uh reburied it was reburied and it uh the, the book talks about kind of the how it was think of the Spaniards and like the whole you know Christianity and Catholicism that developed right and then um, kind of their perception of this like goddess um, and if we look closely at the image right we see like from the bottom um, uh, her feet are, are cut off, but there's uh, her feet and then her skirt, which is made up of like intertwined uh, serpents and uh, snakes, right? And then you move up and there's a belt that has a skull in the middle. Uh, and then you move further up and she appears to have this necklace with hands and hearts with the skull in the middle and then you move further up and it's this face that is made up of two snake uh, heads that are uh, formally placed to create this also like with the two eyes right essentially there's two snakes coming together to form the head but it also looks like the form, an abstracted kind of form of a head with the two um, eyes and kind of the, um, the teeth, right? Um, and so, yeah, this figure to the Spaniards was very like, um, very, terrifying and so they reburied it and then later later in the 1900s it was like uh, um, excavated um, and so uh, so this this um Quatlicue represents um sacrificial death so sacrifice and um, these like offerings of like sacrifice to like sustain <laughs> the world and also the potential for new life. Um, so then we move on to Francisco Goya um, in Spain during 1808. Um, and this is oil on canvas and Goya was in his painting decided this wasn't a commissioned painting it wasn't commissioned by like 
wealthy or um, anyone, right? It was his decision to paint this as an important image for that time um, during the uprising of the French and French occupation of Spain um, under Napoleon and Napoleon's army. So occupation of uh, Napoleon from France in Spain and um, really the use of force to um, with with the local people that were um, rebelling uh, against the French occupation. And so um, this is an image that depicts executions. Um, it's the citizens. So on the left, right, you see all these figures, figures on the ground. There's a central figure, right, with his hands up. His shirt is white. Um, his hands are kind of up. And if you see very closely, his right hand has this kind of like hole, right? Um, which is also used to reference the crucifixion of Jesus. Um, and so you see all these suffering faces, right? Look at all the faces of the folks on the left, uh, folks that have been brutally killed. Um, folks that are trembling, folks that are praying and protesting. Um, and on the right, you see just a line, right, of soldiers and their arms pointing, their, um, their guns pointing at, at, the, um, at the people on the left. And with you can see also like with the different um with the values right on the right you see the soldiers kind of in this like dark shadow and then the people that are rebelling are illuminated with this light you also see um like a kind of hill in the background right so this kind of like you can't, they can't really escape. They're like confined to the space between this uh, piece of rock and um, these soldiers pointing these guns. Um, and so also the repeated kind of postures of the soldiers and the fact that we don't see their faces and they look very similar, right? And color scheme and all these grays and browns. Um, really like making them just not individualizing them or not humanizing them, just making them kind of a part of this like military system that is um, attacking and um, executing uh, local um, uprisers. So this was, um, this painting is also meant to, I mean, the, this painting for its time is very, it's important because it's like how war is depicted, right? And really when we see this piece, it's like depicted from the, from the view of the folks that are rebelling, right? The folks that are uh, in the middle of getting executed. And so really, we're really not focusing on the soldiers or really glorifying war, right? With these horses, with this, we're not looking at this like grandiose depiction of war and like conquest, right? We're looking at, no, these people rebelled and look at, look at the, the horrific, um, it, this horrific event because it did happen. It was an event that happened in Spain. Um, and uh, yeah, look at the, the, the faces, the way folks' uh, bodies are placed, right? And so this is also such a central like idea with like uh, protest art and affirmation. It's like, this is the perspective. This is showing the, hor like, the horrifying uh, results of war and um, occupation. 
And so then we move on to John Hartfield. Um, and this is a photo montage um, created in Germany in 1933. And I know you folks probably taken some history classes in public school that have, have talked about um, the Holocaust and the Nazi movement and the rising of Adolf Hitler. Very terrifying, very horrific time um, that still is like very shocking, right? Um, and really sad and horrific. Um, but this, this artist used photo montage to represent one of the leaders, one of uh, the leaders of the Nazi party during that time, during Nazi Germany. And so he's using actual like newspaper images and collaging them, making a montage out of them. And this, this was for a publication during that time. Um, so really using, um, really exposing through his photo montage and condemning the horrors of Nazi Germany. Um, look at his hand, look at what he's holding, look at, you know, there's blood on the blade of that axe. There's blood on his uniform, right? This like military uniform. Um, and look at the face, right? This like very aggressive, very like bully kind of face, right? Um, and then in the background, there is um, este, the German parliament building, which during that time, uh, 1933, it was destroyed. Um, so th this is like a governmental parliament building that was destroyed by the Nazi party, but they blamed it and they made it seem like it was, um, they blamed it on the communists and communism. And so you also see during this time, if you're taking uh, like a, a current history class, and I honestly wish I had like more time with you all because, or also is, there's just like, I feel like I'm going over like a small piece of like this whole historical uh, time, right? That's very important. Um, but there's just a lot of talk of like communism and like communist Russia and like Soviet Union and like the cause of all these conflicts and like the US being like this imperial, you know, like capitalist force. Um, and so if any of y'all have taken a history class at the university, uh, let me know if also like some of these things resonate with some of the things that you looked at, at the his, in the history class. And also, especially if you're in Mexican American studies that then you probably have seen some or, or have studied some of this. Um, and so it was destroyed by the Nazi party, but they blamed it on the communists. So then the party the Nazi party who was trying to gain power um, with Adolf Hitler, right? Gaining more and more power in Germany used this as a tactic to seize power and gain more and more power um, and uh, ending any democratic process that was in place um, during that time. So then we move on to um, Siqueiros, which is, he's a Mexican muralist, amazing. Um, and if you go to Mexico and Mexico City, you'll see, um, you can see a lot of his murals. But this is a piece, a painting that he did um, called Echo of a Scream in uh, 1937 in Mexico. But he was really talking about the horror of the Spanish Civil War. Um, again, another war from 1936 to 1939. Um, these being like one of the events that kind of uh, were a part of a larger <laughs> group of events that led to World War II. Um, and so when you see the painting, ¿verdad? Um, you notice, what you notice first, uh, or one of the first things that you notice is the, the face, right? The large face in back, this child's face that is crying is the, 
it's it's helpless it's it's screaming there's a lot of pain in that image right and then you see in the forefront the the full body of the kid the same face right and then all this chaos and destruction around it and uh so this figure sitting amid debris um destruction of modern warfare and also, what's very particularly interesting to me, <laughs> because um, so the the child's face and the full body, and then the face in the back of it, really to me depicts also this trauma of experiencing war and seeing kind of when there's war things are very unstable right humans need stability human humans need like basic needs of food and shelter right when there's war when uh, there's just like this it's it's very unstable right um and also looking at it from a perspective of a child right from a child experiencing war um and sort of this, through this trauma, this kind of detachment happens. And uh, if any of y'all study psychology, there is like something around detachment, right? And so uh, this image really, to me, also talks a lot about like the trauma and the pain of living in that environment of instability and just seeing all the images that you're seeing of like chaos and war, right? Um, so then we move to Japan. Um, during 1962, um, this artist uh, documented, took images of the victims in Japan who survived the atomic bombing in Nagasaki. And if you've taken a history class, you've probably um, also studied that the U.S., uh, that the U.S. through military um, dropped two atomic bombs. One being in Nagasaki, Japan at the end of World War II. And just thinking about just like also scientifically that the you know, the, these disco this discovery of like the scientific discovery of how to split an atom, right? And how to create nuclear um, atomic energy. And this being used as a tactic for war. And uh, this force that this bomb created that killed more than 50,000 people in Japan and caused major injury and deformities to many, many people in Japan. And so this artist uses photography and light to really depict these scars and deformities and like, um, you know, the state of these, of the victims of this bomb right after um, and really, if you see the dark and the lightness and really the lightness illuminating all the scar tissue, all the scar from the skin of the, of the person, right? Um, and this, when we see this, right, we don't see this often, right? And usually in history class, um, from what I remember, Texas public history class, they just say, oh, the US World War II, bombs, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, right? But you don't see images of the civilians, the 50,000 civilians that died. And so art is a way to really talk about, hey, like this is, and this is why art is used by journalists, right? In articles um, to really spotlight um what is happening right and so artists art is very connected to humanity right artists always want to uh 
well, not our, all artists, but <laughs> artists want to talk about like the human condition, right? Uh, we want to talk about uh, issues that are affecting humans, inhumanity, right? And so this is, uh, you know, photography really being used to depict in inhumanity and war. Um, and instead of looking at the U.S. as this or the US and Japan, like Japan is the enemy and US lives were saved and all this um, kind of government propaganda, right? Um, that it's really just shedding light on people. Like this is people. Um, the basis on people and injury and um, destruction, right? And so then we move to South Africa. Um, and this is a piece that was done in 1985. South Africa had um, a period of history of apartheid, and you probably have heard that word. Um, and it's a system, a system, a government system, a system of laws, a system of school system, um, of schooling that uh, a system of legal racial separation, right? So think about also the 1950s and the 60s um, in this country, in the US of, of racial separation. So the US, this particular piece is talking about uh, this exhibition that happened in um, the Metropolitan Museum Right. And uh, so this specific uh, installation, right, is not the installation that was at the Metropolitan Museum, but it was created somewhere else to talk about the, inst the artwork and that uh, exhibit, exhibit that was part of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So what happened is that, um, so talking about apartheid and that system of racial separation, right? The US-based um, mobile oil company, um, corporation. So mobile, mobile is what you see on the right, right on the blue flag at the bottom, it says mobile, that's the logo of the oil company. So mobile US-based oil corporation really profited from apartheid. And the way that it, they profited from apartheid is that they sold supplies directly to the African, South African police and the military that were really enforcing this apartheid, right? Remember, this was like laws, legal racial uh, segregation, separation, right? So then the use of force, the use of policing and military to enforce those rules, right? And so US-based oil companies were providing supplies directly to the military and the police, which perpetuated violence um, and oppression to local African peoples, right? Um, South Africa, between the white European, you know, colonizer and then the native African. Um, so during that time, also the Metropolitan uh, was kind of, you know, uh, their narrative was like, hey, don't you want to fund our exhibits, right? And really, the Metropolitan Museum was accepting oil money, right, um, to fund some of these exhibits, right? And so the Metropolitan Museum uh, took corporate sponsorship uh, and created this exhibit on Native Africans in South Africa. And so the, essentially they use corporate money to create an exhibition about South Africa, right? Uh, which that money was tied to apartheid in South Africa, right? And so with this piece, we really look at the connection of these th three things, right? The profits from oppression, right? So currently we can think of um, migrant detention centers that are primarily private detention centers that 
are like prisons. They're essentially prisons. That is a profit model. People are profiting from that. And so this is a connection between profits, right? Oppression, profits from oppression, and also museums. Um, so um, this is a quote from the book that says, uh, so this is the name of the, of the piece, Metro um, Mobiltan raises awareness of the often hidden ways that one country's cultural and, and economy, culture and economy can profit from an unjust situation halfway around the world. So really seeing the US profit from uh, oppression and apartheid in South Africa. Um, and then we move to the US with um, Esther Hernandez. And this is probably one of my favorite pieces. And I first looked at this piece when I was in college. Um, and so Esther Hernandez, US, Chicana, you know, uh, was really making a comment about farm, work, farm workers and pesticides and insecticides. So looking in particular to, you know, what what we usually see as sun-made raisins, right? You've all seen that packaging. Um, they're still selling uh, sun-made raisins, right? Uh, at the store, uh, raisins coming from grapes um, and really commenting on the mass kind of insecticides that were placed on these fields, endangering the farm workers, right? But also um, contaminating the groundwater that was also used for drinking water um, for the local population of farm workers. And so she uses advertising, right? Which advertising has its like own kind of framework of like how to appeal to the viewer and how to appeal to the consumer so that the consumer goes and buys the products in at the store, right? And so she really uses this tactic of advertising, right? To kind of flip it and to be like uh, turning, you know, this like nice, you know, uh, made uh, image, right? And like turning her into a skull. And instead of sun made raisins, it's sun mad raisins. And so really using this, um, this branding, this packaging and flipping it and, and really pointing to the oppression of insecticides sides and of farm work, right? Um, and this exploitation of labor. And uh, beyond exploitation of labor, it's, you know, it's beyond that because it's like now these farm workers are having to inhale these very um, toxic pesticides, right? Which could lead to health conditions. Um, and so this, like for your assignment, you can totally look at advertising too and kind of use that kind of flip it and make a comment on consumerism or on a particular product, you know? So that's something um, to think about for your assignment. Um, then we move to Kara Walker and she um, also in the US this piece, she does um, a lot of kind of silhouettes of figures from um, the era of slavery. And um, they're cut out silhouettes, life size. Um, this piece is called They Was Nice White Folks While They Lasted. Um, this was exhibited in a museum, in a show. Um, and you see, so with this particular image, which you'll see if you look up the work of Kara Walker, you'll see um, more of the, the silhouettes, right? Um, and also she has this really powerful piece called um, The Sphinx, uh, made of like sugar um, and the whole history of sugar and um, slave labor. And so with this work in particular, you see the silhouettes, right? And then on top of that, you see the proje a projection. And for the viewer, imagine the viewer going into this room in this exhibit. Um, this is kind of like 
uh, the projection being a way for the viewers to participate um, in the, the, the larger kind of installation, right? Participate in the action by casting their own shadows on the walls. Um, and I mean, her work has been called controversial. Um, it's also, you know, been like, oh, that's so, you know, those are very stereotypical images, right? Of, uh, of, of black, right, folks and silhouettes. And there's a whole history of like uh, white folk using <clears throat> using um, images, right, and uh, to perpetuate this image of Black people, of this very racist uh, uh, image of Black people. Um, but she is really making, uh, she's making so, ma <laughs> so many commentaries, um, really about that era, really, um, you know, using images like uh, really um, horrific images as well um, with, you know, s slaves and um, white, you know, white uh, masters um, having children, right? Or so it's really also depicting this like horrific, the, the horrific just time of, of slavery of, uh, you know, rape and um, and uh, and I apologize if that was like too strong for some folks because I also want to be sensitive um, to the space, but um, also just depicting the horrific conditions of slavery and just the 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 power dynamics and just like the ugly the ugliness that happened you know that we, that folks don't usually talk about um that folks are afraid to talk about you know um but that's that's a part of u.s history and it needs to be talked about mm. and so for her um responding to oh well these images can be controversial um, she says that there are themes that should be discussed, that we should have discussions about. So then we move to Mexico again. Is the, and just talking about um, preservation, right? Preservation of culture and just, uh, you know, with, 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 colon, with Spanish colonization and uh, really the Spanish uh, trying to get rid of a whole culture of people, of native people, that imagine with, uh, with imposing religion and with wanting to get rid of an entire culture comes with also the destruction of all these artifacts and artwork. So remember um, in the last couple of weeks, right, we've talked uh, a little bit about like Aztec spiritual worldviews. We haven't, you know, talked uh, in depth enough, I think, but um, just thinking about just uh, entire um, kind of civilizations and groups and architecture, like, right, the architecture, the worldview that was developed, the religion, the rituals, the art, everything where we think about culture and we, we think about our own culture, right? And some of us come from different cultures. Um, life is very much centered in culture and art is a part of life, right? And so um, when colonization, uh, with the colonization of, um, from the Spanish, right? There was also a mass destruction of art and architecture and, um, one example being the Tenochtitlan main temple, Templo Mayor in Mexico City, if anyone's been to Mexico City, um, we can see only kind of the basis, the base of that pyramid because the Spanish destroyed it and used a lot of it to create the cathedral that's right on the side, right? And so when we see this like mass destruction of um, art and artifacts, right? This, um, these were codices that were created um, after, I think after, 
I have to double check. Um, but these codices were manuscripts that per, like that talked about rituals, that talked about symbols, language, worldviews. They talked about many things, right? And then, so this was a way through art, through through manuscripts and writing stuff down, through archiving, you know, uh, they were able to preserve uh, some of their pre-Columbian uh, culture or Mesoamerican culture. So then you see, this is a memorial also in your book. Um, and it also is a memorial to memorialize the, the people that were killed during European colonization of Australia. Australia was a native also and um, taken over through genocide. And so this what is a memorial meant to memorialize um, native peoples aboriginal people and um so you see right that memorials are also and we saw in the in the last um in the last lecture last week that memorials are very important memorials are important for uh people that, that who have passed right and very violently and and really remembering um that history and remembering the people, right, um, and the individual people that have passed. Este, so this, this piece is also affirming culture, right? Affirming that this culture existed here before colonization, and it still exists. It still continues to exist. Um, and then we moved to the U.S. <laughs> and um, so this is a Pepon Osorio, uh, Puerto Rican artist. This um, lived between, uh, sorry, not lived, but this work was created between uh, 93 and 99. And really, again, with this theme of, with this, not only a theme, but just like this need, right? We have like important uh, to affirm um, the worth of, of culture and our culture, especially if it's being like attacked on a daily, right? And so this is a Puerto Rican artist from Nueva York and really representing with this installation, the worth of Puerto Rican culture in New York. Um, and so you see, you see, it's like kind of like a room that you would find in a home, right? Like maybe some of your casas look like this too, right? Because this is also like, like Puerto Rican. This looks like Mexicano also too. Um, and so looking at the cabinets, right? The, the table, right? Um, and also all the faces depicted on the, the, the images, the pictures on the walls, the... Uh, pictures, the portraits on the chairs, right? And so while it's an affirmation of like, this is Puerto Rican and you can feel it culturally, like, you know, and if you're, um, yeah, you can feel it culturally. And um, while protesting how Puerto Rican people are depicted in mass media. So, you know, looking at the news, also, Cops, you know, Cops was around for a long time, and I think it has finally just been canceled because of how problematic it is, but like really depicting Puerto Ricans, right? And the same for like happens with Black folks, same happens with Mexicanos depicted as criminals, right? Depicted in the mass media and news and shows as criminals. Um, and uh just wanted to also read the the welcome mat um, that is part of the installation oh also notice the police line do not cross right um which also you know uh talks about like that like you know puerto ricans in the media always uh portrayed as criminals um so which you know as we know and uh you know and a lot of us um, in this place 
are Mexicanos, right? And are I'm I'm a daughter of immigrants from Mexico, directly from Mexico, and so we also see kind of the depiction, right, of of Mexico and of the border being very like, you know, it's it's dangerous. It's like there's a lot of crime and narcos, and we have to stop the narco narcos, and then, you know, it it's like. All these narratives also justify the, all this violence towards um, migrants, and so is the 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 welcome mat on the image um, reads only if you can understand that it has taken years of pain to gather into our homes, our most valuable possessions. But greater pain is to see how in the movies others make fun of the way we live. So very powerful um, quote also that comes out in your book. So now we're talking about um, Palestine and the occupation of, of Palestine from by Israel, right? Um, and in this image, you see you see it's a room, right? It's an empty room. The objects that you see are these um, kind of wire mesh lockers, right? So essentially they're lockers, they're meshed. Also, you see in the center, in the middle of this installation between the, both of those kind of walls, right? That are created, this light bulb that swings around and it's swinging around and it's creating all these shadows. So look at look at the walls, look at all the shadows that are cast. It's almost like it's like this prison, right? Um, and so with the occupation of, I, and I don't know if you folks, you know, have learned about this in history, but um, Israel is occupying uh, Palestine and is using force, right? And so um, there's been a very long kind of history that has, you know, also led to um, this point. Um, and I also need to like learn more and more about this, but essentially that there is force being used um, in the territory that was assigned to Palestine. Um, to force people out of their land, to also divide land um, and divide communities in, in, the, in, in Palestine. And so this piece directly references prison. It, it references surveillance and control. Um, kind of the lights being kind of also searchlights, right? Uh, and because the light is not static, the light is moving. It also creates these moving shadows, right? Which really reveals, which really talks about the instability of the place and the instability of the people that the people experience, um, the people without power, right? Um, because again, the there's military that is enforcing um, this claim of land, this occupation of land. Um, and so this violence in Palestine has created um, 7 million Palestinian refugees. And you think of displacement, right? If folks are displaced from their homes, then they flee somewhere else. And they're refugees, very similar to, to also what's happening on the border. Um, so then, uh, this is, uh, so this is an artist that uses, uh, she kind of intervenes with, uh, kind of signs, right? Like signs that we typically, typically see like construction signs or traffic signs. She also does a lot of projections. Um, she's a very interesting artist and this was done in 1989. Um, and it reads private property created Crime. And so this idea of dividing property, of this taking of land, right, and and uh, kind of the police state and the police force 
being like their main job really being just protection of property. Um, and uh, the US has uh, the highest amount of incarcerated people in the world, um, which also connects to mass incarceration. So then lastly, uh, we talk about Dores Solcedo and she is a, um, I think she's an artist from Colombia and this was done in 2007, 2008. Um, it's in, in a museum and it, it's part of an exhibit, but this floor was, um, essentially she created this like huge crack in this like seemingly just like normal floor, right? Like this floor just seems like it's part of the building, it's part of the space. Um, but she really depicts this crack as, uh, you know, to depict borders and to depict um, kind of the divide between uh, races and social classes, right? Um, all being a construct of this hierarchy and really with this crack, like if you were to go into a building, right? Or a house, normal, I see normal, like, oh, I'm gonna go into a house or a building and I see this huge crack on the floor. Like, what are our first thoughts? Oh, this, this is like not a good foundation. Like the foundation is coming apart, right? Um, so essentially, these divides and these borders and these cracks on the foundation create all this social instability, a lot of instability, unstable structure. So if there is divide and oppression and inhumanity and just uh, oppression of peoples, right? At the very foundation of a structure of a society, it's very unstable, very unstable, right? just like the foundation of a building. There's cracks, of there's borders, divides, you know, very unstable. And so I um, also, one last thing, the, so after, sh this is an installation, right? So it's not a permanent piece, but after she filled in the cracks um, and, filling in the cracks at the end of the installation to kind of also depict these visible scars. These visible scars still remain, right? So when you fill it in, you still can see kind of the difference, right? You still can see like this remnants of this, if this line of this crack. And so really thinking about the scars um, and you know, when I referenced Gloria Anzaldúa earlier, and um, she references the border as an open scar, an open wound. Um, and so also what happens after. Um, so that's all I have for you folks today. I am going to stop sharing the screen. And I'm going to see if anyone has any questions. We have a whole nine minutes left from our hour. So go ahead and ask anything that you want. Um, or also just um, comment on anything. I'm going to give you folks a couple of minutes. Uh, and then I'll wait.
Hey, Anthony. So, um, so great question. Um, the slides that I showed you, so kind of think about that as like inspiration, right? So you saw that some people use drawings, some people use photographs, collages, photo montage. Um, so really see those just as like inspiration kind of examples. And then what you'll do is, for example, me, well, I, I have like a lot of issues that I care about, but um, for me, I'll be like, well, I really care about, you know, people having access to voting, right? And so then I'll write like, you know, something like uh, make voting accessible. And then I'll create like an image based on that, right? That kind of helps my text. And this is, uh, if this seems a little bit like overwhelming too, it's okay because this is kind of like a a design assignment and it doesn't have to be like this like grand artwork or design either right I just I th I also thought it would be fun um, and also very important to kind of express right take this week to express uh, ourselves through making an image and really expressing like what we care about you know um, and so does that answer your question, more or less? So remember, there's no quiz this week. It's it's the actual image, right, that you will turn in. Um, we will probably go back to the quiz for the remaining, um, so chapter 11, 12, 13, and 14. Um, yeah, and then we have our final. Does that make sense, Anthony? Okay, cool. So that it seems like those are all the questions we have. Thank you so much for um, joining. I also, please, 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 the lectures are required. Um, so if you don't join the Facebook or the Facebook, the YouTube live, it's totally okay. You can um, watch the lecture on my YouTube channel. Um, which I just specifically use for this class. It's, it's really not a personal channel. It's just uh, meant for teaching. <laughs> um, este, and, and so please, please see the lectures. It's a requirement and I can see how many people have viewed it. Um, and so Romelia asks, this topic is based on culture, it seems. So watch the full lecture, Romelia. Um, you, will, you will see it's about um, social protest, social protest and affirmation. Um, so looking at the different art work that was made to uh, uh, protest uh, war, este, este, you know, uh, injustice, oppression, uh, racism. Um, and so, yeah, go ahead and watch the entire thing, Romelia, if you came late. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and close. Uh, thank you all for joining and I hope you have a beautiful week. And please, if you have any more questions, just feel free to email me. Um, and I hope things are going well. Please also, it helps me because I can't see you all. Uh, I can't see your faces. Um, we, you know, don't have uh, discussions. And so 
uh, please be sure to, you know, send me a note also, um, you know, saying uh, just, you know, how, how it's going for you and any, any kind of adjustments or accommodations that you folks um, need. And so, okay, that's great. I'm going to close out. Thank you, folks. Have a beautiful week.